morning. This is my video diary, part one of uh, a few days in Sass Fay. Well, as you can see, there's plenty of snow around. In fact, we came back along this path last night. Uh, there were three foot deep drifts of snow uh, which hadn't been cleared and it took us um, some time to come back with the suitcase from the restaurant. Uh, everything is uh, everything is closed here at the minute. And, uh, I'm not of, uh, going onto the slopes today at all, as you can see. Uh, basically, there's a considerable concern uh, for avalanche. The last one of which took out the centre of the town's church back in the 1950s. Just uh, witnessed a rather interesting international incident. We've got a gentleman there who's uh, shoveling his road, and uh, Jonathan, the American semi-resident, <coughs> with the uh, rather snazzy snow machine. Um, and there was, had, there was some sort of dispute as to who should be doing what, um, with a lot of very rude words attached to it. So, uh, moving on from here, I'm going to walk up into Sass Fay and um, get some provisions. Last night uh, we flew in, the flight was not uh, perhaps an accurate summary of it, something of an understatement, but we got here in one piece. And then following that we were lucky to uh, be able to use the road up from to Sass Fay by a bus, which normally takes 45 minutes and took about an hour and a quarter. But lucky because the road had been closed for most of the day. So there's plenty of snow here, so just wandering on up here. On a good day, last time I was here, which was January, it was stupendous. That's the direction that you ski from, if you ski, which I don't. And uh, I'm heading now uh, towards the town. As far as the temperature goes, it's pretty bloody cold, I can tell you that. And the only way to keep warm here probably shovel snow, which I'm going to have a bit of a go at later on this morning. Uh, my idea was to do a bit of running here. I don't think there's going to be an awful lot of chance of doing that. I think we're just going to be keeping warm for the next couple of days and then hoping that the road's going to be open and we're going to be able to get back in time for Christmas. So, if you want a white Christmas, this is the bloody place to come, there's no doubt about that. So there we are. This is uh, part one of uh, my postcard from Sass Fay. I see this thing's going out of batteries, so that'll do for now. I'm uh, <coughs> down in the center of Sass Fay now, having just done the shopping and uh, Getting rid of snow is a pretty major problem. Um, it looks quite, um, the streets are quite uh, clear here, but uh, they're actually lethal on top now that they've taken, so you've got to be really careful how you walk. Snow going away.
Right, off to get some bread and meat now. Well, this is sort of phase four of my video diary of day one in South Bay. I think we're going to get a demonstration of how these things work. This is uh, pretty much a work industry at the minute. I was tempted to uh, go back down that way so I could just show you how deep the snow is, but actually having been up to the waist several times on the side of the not to bother. Here we go. If you don't like snow in your drive, you get one of these and spray it over everybody else. Back out of the path, it's just cleared, people walk on it, turns it into an ice ring. Sorry. Uh, well, okay, um, I'm heading back now. Uh, it's taken me approximately an hour and a half to buy my groceries, with those and what's in the rucksack. Basically, I could have got them all from the first supermarket and then just gone to the butchers, which was next door. Um, but I just found it a bit of a walk, really. Oh yes, you can have a look here and see how deep this snow is. That sounded like an avalanche. Anyway, I, uh, I digress. Uh, yeah, it's taken me about an hour and a half to do what probably would have taken maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes, 12, including getting in and out of the car, to do at Budgeons at home. It's probably also cost me about 18 times as much. Uh, the cost of living in Switzerland is just unbelievable. Uh, I did have a, I have a bit of an ear problem at the minute. What? Bit of an ear problem at the minute. Oh. Oh yeah. We went into I think that was the restaurant we went into last night. Yeah, very nice it was too. Uh had a steak, Alice had a pizza. Uh I think we even got change out of a hundred francs, which was pretty good. Um so where was I? Oh, fancy carrying an umbrella around here. <laughs> Lightweight. Um so yeah, um where was I? Yeah, the cost of living in Switzerland is just astronomic. It's always been expensive, but as the rest of Europe goes tits up, I think Switzerland can pretty much do what it wants, really. Uh, somewhere like here, it's got snow, well, too much snow at the minute. Uh, it's great, apparently, in the summer. This is only the second time I've been here, so I've never been here in the summer, but I've heard it's, it's got a pretty thriving summer trade. So they can pretty much charge what they want. Another thing about uh, Switzerland is they have a massive war on plastic bags, even worse than ours, to the extent that it's uh, not easy to get them and all rubbish has to be disposed of in green plastic bags, two of which I've just purchased for the best part of six Swiss francs. So if they don't get you one way, they'll get you another. Uh, well, today's day one of our stay here. Uh, there's not going to be much in the way of outdoor pursuits done today, so I think it's uh, get the fryer on, get the bacon sizzling, batten down, batten down the hatches, and watch the snow fall. So that's pretty much it for now. I'm going to whack this onto YouTube, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Bye.